Here we are. Toilet block. <laughs> Bothy toilet block. Ridiculous. The joys of being able to wake up uh, out in the wild, in the middle of nowhere, basically, and being able to use a proper toilet, uh, admittedly, uh, like a hole in the floor type, but still, as opposed to the regular way that you generally need to go on these kind of trips. What a treat, what an absolute treat. So it's, it's just the small things, the small things that, uh, yeah, bring you so much happiness. <laughs> So, on to day five. Uh, didn't this come around quickly? Uh, it certainly did while I was walking it. Uh, just first off, for uh, anyone who watched the previous video, I probably should apologise for the massive tangent I went off on uh, in relation to the Bothy and Bothies in general. Um, I know there's a lot of people who have probably never tried a Bothy, and it's kind of just me uh saying to you give them a go honest you there's every chance that you'll love these things uh the way that i do um uh, you know not wanting to go off on one again but they are just so cool they're, you know, they're not for everyone admittedly I, I have met people who just aren't into them whatsoever but you could do a lot worse than uh, at least give it a try um word of warning if you did go to glen feshy bother and maybe made that your first one. Uh, it's kind of all downhill from there. <laughs> you, you won't find another bother quite like uh, Glen Feshy Bother. Um, and the one I was going to be heading to later in the day certainly wasn't like Glen Feshy Bother. My God, was it not like Glen Feshy Bother? <laughs> but yeah, we'll uh, we'll come to that later. We'll come to that later. <laughs> uh, got myself some coffee. Uh, with my adored Aeropress. I uh, don't want to turn this into, you know, some kind of like advertising thing. And I certainly don't get any money from uh, Aeropress. But Aeropress coffee thingy-majigs. Uh, if you've never tried one of them, honest, they are... I'm, I'm not going to say life-changing. That's That's been way too dramatic. But they are so cool. So cool. Um, you know, a real proper nice cup of coffee so yeah if you're into coffee you could do a lot worse than uh, get hold of one of these things um it does this terrible it sounds like an advertisement honestly i get no money from aeropress i promise you but they're good had myself some uh, adventure foods um i never quite know how to say it it's got a k on the front but i don't know if it's a silent k so whether it's nuspa or knuspa muesli I've, I've got no idea uh, answers on a postcard um, but yeah had some of that which was nowhere near as good as the bacon sausage and egg butty I'd had the day before but hey ho um, so yeah got that down me uh, said farewell to Sam and Gus um, as I said a good few times really brilliant guy thoroughly enjoyed the evening felt surprisingly uh, good actually quite chipper first thing in the morning considering how much we'd necked alcohol wise so we went through a, a you know fair bit but yeah felt good springing my step and off we went off we went on our way to join back up with the official trail so just leaving the bother fantastic evening with sam and gus really enjoyed it Really cool guy. So yeah, on to the next bothy, all being well. Which is Drake's bothy. Uh, not an MBA bothy. And from what I've looked at, it's kind of just a little shack. 
Well, that should be cool. Looking forward to it. Love finding a new bother. So I suppose the only problem you'd say with what I've done in going to the bother is there's a few miles a day. You have to go back the way you came, basically. Which in general isn't something I like doing. But in this place, kind of doesn't bother me at all. I just love this place. Something about it sort of rem reminds me what you see like the Yukon. Just has that kind of feel to it. So it's definitely no hardship for me to uh, retrace yeah, re my steps today. It's beautiful. Be with this rain buggering up there. So all the snow has gone completely now. Uh, there's not even much up on the top of the hills. So that's kind of a shame, but still lovely. Rain keeps trying, but it's just about holding off. It's all good. There's the river down there. This forest is just lovely. Forestry tracks in, in general aren't my favourite, but as I say, there's just something about this place that's absolutely magic. Love it. Cairngorm's in the background. Or Cairngorm Hill, should I say. Beautiful. Uh, so looking back on the footage that I've done before recording this, it's come to me notice that it's ludicrous the amount of times I say amazing, phenomenal, beautiful, lovely. Um, I think there's a few more as well. Yeah, I've really got to expand my vocabulary. Uh, you could probably play one of those drinking games where every time I say one of those words, you have to do a shot. Um, yeah, that's uh, it's quite shocking. Um, <laughs> just an observation. I'm sure you've already noticed it anyway. <laughs> there so onto the tarmac how cool is that little beachy bit Quite unexpected So, still trudging the road, uh, pleasant enough, but obviously 
walking on tarmac isn't the greatest. Uh, uh, pleasant enough though. Dead easy going as well. Obviously you can put good miles on when you're just walking down the road like this. Uh, but yeah, scenery wise it's just lots of trees really. Yeah, trees and road. Uh, but yeah, like I say, it's that nice that you can get a good bunch of miles on. Join up, I'll back up with the official way. You know, a couple of hours if that. Uh, it's not actually missing that much off uh, in the way itself. I mean, if you wanted to, you could always just completely retrace your steps if you if you wanted to do what I've done and stay at the bother uh, you could retrace your steps completely back to where I diverted uh, but I can't really be bothered doing that just lazy really but yeah just carrying on down here all good the rain's staying off so that's good so yeah loving it and it was, for me, definitely, definitely worthwhile staying at the Bother. Loved it, had a great evening. Sam was a proper nice guy, really cool guy. So yeah, just sat up, talking and drinking whiskey, putting the world to rights, as you do. So yeah, really enjoyed it, it was great. All right, on we go. That clip there, uh, was the first time that I'd actually recorded some footage uh, whilst walking along with the video camera in uh, in front of me. Uh, it just feels really weird, even now doing this, just feels dead odd, not, not something I've ever done before. And uh, like I said in the first video, it just freaks me out a bit. I don't know why, it's very irrational, but one of the great things in relation to that, um, and I don't mean this to sound like I was I was using aid, but it was brill that you know I had aid there and I could just film in because it's 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 always nice to have someone in you know in the shot I think. Um, so yeah, that that was really good in the fact that I didn't have to be in front of the camera, uh, but aid was. Um, aid hated it as well. Absolutely hated it. Um, which I think you can probably tell from the look on his face quite a few times in the uh, in the videos from days one, two and three. Yeah, he wasn't into it at all. Bless him. And another funny thing was I've got a tripod which I took with me and the thing had not been out of its bag. I hadn't take it out of, taken it out of the rucksack once. Um, on the entire trip, which is quite quite weird. Um, the footage from tomorrow, uh, if you, you know, assuming that you make it to the tomorrow's video, uh, might seem a little bit jarring because it is the first day where I actually took the tripod out of my rucksack and did a few videos with me walking by and stuff. So yeah, it will probably seem a bit strange because you won't have seen it in, in any of the five videos previously. I, I think one of the things with uh, doing the footage on the tripod is just the time it takes, um, inclement weather conditions as well. But it is more to do with the time, to be honest. Uh, the one downer about walking in winter is just you are kind of limited with the hours you've got to do it. Not like summer, you know, where you can uh, you can walk till 10 o'clock if not later uh, and you've still got the light but obviously in winter you know once you get past four o'clock that light's fading so you do have to take that into account and you know taking a tripod out setting up if you're doing that constantly all, all you know all the way along the trail ain't really going to get very far so you know that, that that had a lot to do with it to be fair But yeah, as, as I say, you've got uh, you've got that to look forward to for the uh, footage on on day six. Me just wandering past the camera, 
Right. right, so this is going to be the turning. It's going to take us finally off this road. King Craig. Yeah, so this is also yeah, quite a lot of road walking that. Definitely nice to be off it. And this is gonna take us to some little locky type things. And then not too far from rejoining the EHW. Just got a got ahead of myself there, walking the completely wrong way. It's actually uh, up this way. what happens when you start gabbing and not concentrating on what you're doing proper nice little section this was um, I mean that that was one of the things with the detour it, it was such lovely surroundings um, yeah some tarmac bashing um, surrounded by trees but it, even that was nice enough um, but yeah, it did take you through some really nice little uh, little bits. Uh, weren't actually too far away at this point from joining back up with the uh, with the official trail as well. So that that was good. I was yeah, you know, I was, I was looking forward to getting getting back on the trail. It's rather lovely. Very and it nice. hadn't taken that long at all to get there. As I say, very, very easy going, tarmac, um, no up and down to speak of whatsoever, it was pretty flat. So yeah, we'll soon be there, soon be back on the way. Little picnic area type thing here. Might take advantage of getting a bit peckish. Lovely little view, why not? Bench is soaked. Well, there you go. So, this now was properly headed for the end of the route variation. Uh, what I will do in the video is just in case um, anyone's interested, I'll actually stick stills of the, the route variation that I did so you can see it on a map. Um, you know, not uh, for one minute thinking that, yeah, this is the, uh, this is the way you should do the route. I'm not, not meaning that at all, but just in case you did. Um, Let's, you know, say for example, you did have six days to do it. Um, you know, it really was at this point, um, low on mileage when I got to Drake's Bother. Uh, I think I said before, it was only gonna be six miles from there. So yeah, it could just be something to do if you've got that amount of days, you've covered some decent mileage in the first few days. Yeah, just to uh, stretch it out and take in an absolutely beautiful place while you're at it there we go beautiful again <laughs> Right, so this is it folks, this is literally the point where I'm joining back up with the official East Highland Way. So that there is where I would have come up. And yeah, this now is back on the official route. Cool. Yeah, back on the way, so exciting times. 
back on the way uh, and actually uh, heading for Lock Inch now, INSH and after that there's actually not a great deal of mileage to go uh, to get to Drake's Bothy anyway. Uh, not, not a lot of miles to go to have him or to be fair. Uh, so yeah, crack on down here, get to Lock Inch, have a look at that. Another little bite to eat, and uh, all good, loving it. Inch. The weather uh, for the whole trip really uh, was, yeah, looking back on it, really good. Um, you know, we had the snow, but I certainly don't uh, classify that as bad weather anyway, uh, as, as you can probably tell from uh, me going on about how much I enjoyed that part of it. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it was funny for the, you know, for the end of January. Not wintry at all, uh, very mild, uh, rarely felt especially cold. A um, little bit of rain here and there, I uh, got a bit of rain later on uh, on this day. But no, it was uh, ov overall, yeah, it was uh, really good weather, couldn't complain at all. Headed for Fishy Bridge. Too far from Feshy Bridge now. The river. Still raining. Forest, uh, forest track. But it's trying to brighten up. That's good. Rain stops. Blue sky. Hell yeah. Back on the forestry track. Uh, a lot of forestry track on uh, on this walk throughout the week. 
Uh, but one thing I would say about the forestry tracks, uh, there was a lot of variation to it. Um, they all seem to kind of have their own atmosphere, their own ambience. Um, yeah, just very different, not, you know, just the same old, same old. I would say more variation to them than there was on the Great Glen. So on the map, this is Feshi Moor. Moor seems a, a funny name, considering it's a forest. I'm actually a huge fan of getting up high. Uh, I love walking in the hills, in the mountains, um, getting to the summits of places and just looking down over, over everything. But sometimes it's nice you know, just have a, a pleasant walk, not too much up and down, through the forest, passing locks, along riversides. It's all, uh, yeah, it's all really good. Um, I'm actually doing the Cape Wrath Trail as well in May. Um, so I'm sure uh, from what I've read and seen and heard, uh, I'll be absolutely praying for a bit of nice flat, forestry track uh, when, I, when I do that one um, I don't think I'm gonna don't think I'm gonna have much of it from the sound of it um, although I've got to say I can't wait this is uh, this is the big one I'll tell you what this entire route slim pickings for wild camping spots it's just this stuff or bog it's really hard work to find somewhere you just don't see anywhere at all. It's mad. Uh, one of my big intentions when I, when I you know, decided to do these videos was to make a real point of pointing out every single, you know, pretty much every single place where you'd be able to wild camp. So if somebody was watching the, uh, the video, they'd be able to look at it and go, oh, there, there, there and uh, you know mark them off on the map so we can stay here there there whatever uh, and obviously i've failed miserably on that front because <laughs> i've barely pointed out a single place to wild camp well apart from that one where i said i actually wouldn't wild camp there <laughs> but you could if you wanted to uh, so that was pretty lame um but yeah that, that was definitely my intention um but as, as that clip showed, really, really tough uh, to find places. It really was. Um, I mean, it's funny how often that seems to be the case. Just seems so easy, you know, particularly in Scotland. Camp anywhere you want, but actually finding somewhere to, to do it that is uh, suitable and desirable. Uh, yeah, that's another story entirely. It's, uh, it's tough, it really is tough. So, here we were, Drake's Bothy, uh, another Bothy. Um, just literally tucked away, uh, right, right off the, uh, the East Highland Way trail. Um, couldn't really miss it. So yeah, this was uh, my plan uh, for making my home for the night. Um, and when I say home for the night, uh, as it would turn out, I meant I would mean sort of my home for the night. Uh, I know I had definitely been spoiled with um, the previous night's bother. But yeah, Drake's Bothy is kind of just a wooden shack. Uh, it's not the most welcoming, if I'm being brutally honest. Just got like wooden slats in a bunk bed type setup. Um, looked like there was probably spiders all over it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be brutal and say I've been in better. Um, I'd not been in many worse. Uh, so yeah, didn't take me long to figure that 
I would uh, do a brew in there. So yeah, it was you know, very good for uh, sitting on the bench and making myself a coffee. But apart from that, uh, no, I think I was gonna, uh, gonna make other arrangements for sleeping. Back in the tent, yeah, back in the tent, and somehow it kind of felt uh, right and appropriate as well to spend the last night of the uh, of the trail back in the tent. Um, yeah, just I just wasn't feeling the bother one one little bit. Um, yeah, just, just I don't know, just didn't didn't really have a. A good vibe and uh, I think the bed things more than anything just look so uncomfortable um, I reckon there's even been uncomfortable through me therm arrest um, yeah as I say I just wasn't feeling it at all check my route for the last day um, yeah had a little shifty through the uh, through the guidebook and yeah, just chilled for the evening. It was a really nice night. And yeah, just reflected a bit. <laughs> you have to say that, don't you? You have to do some reflecting when you're laying your tent at night. Um, but yeah, just looking forward to the, uh, to the last day of the trail. The end of the journey. Oh so, yeah, got my head down and uh, look forward to that.